All right, so we're going to play some Grixis Shatter tonight. The only changes from last night, we changed three cards on the sideboard, took out Liliana, replaced it with the K Command, and made the Disdainful Stroke, made the, uh, whatever it is, the Abraded Disdainful Stroke. Just shuffled around. Really, it's still have a grindy card, and then, you know, an artifact removal card, and then just one more counter spell. So, let's jump in here. Get into these games. Again, I can't really see what's going on on Twitch. So if I miss something in the chat, then I am I'm sorry, but I just I can't see I can't see anything that's going on. Those are two very discouraging games earlier today. So I hope everything's working out, but All right, we're already paired. Nice. Yeah, sorry if I'm a little distracted in this just while this gets all set up. All right, we're on the play, which is great. And this game's pretty good. Really do this. I'm just going to see our missions first, not Psycho Mystery Wraiths. We certainly don't need either of these cards here. We find a Death Shadow next turn, we're in good shape. Hopefully we're not playing against like Burn. This would be this hand would not be very good against Burn. There's Hollow One. Yeah. Okay. What is this about GDS that has you playing it so much? I'm just testing. I'm going to be playing it this weekend. Um, so the big question here is I'm about to lose my hand. So I don't know if it's if I should be aggressive here and look for a Death Shadow. I think I'm going to cycle some of these. I'd like to find some kind of action. Snapcaster Mage is not action. Alright, Inquisition is action. Okay, so... I kind of like my hand, so I think I'm just going to take their burning inquiry. If I find a if I find a creature to get in here, then I'm going to be in decent shape. Yeah, Archmage Twitch is like tweaky is a little tweaky at the moment, so I might not. I don't know if you guys can see me or not. One of my friends said that we were okay, so I did Stomping Ground Bloodgast. So they drew the Stomping Ground. We're going to kill this. Blood gas comes back. You appear to be okay, nice. Another living. Hopefully we don't just get hollow one out of this game. I have not played hollow one in a little while. So we get some mountain and another no just mountain and blood gas. So they still have the street wraith in their hand. Get this out of here. So you have Street Wraith and then two unknowns. Nothing. Wow. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to go Snap Serum Visions now. i got to find some business. I could have not cycled. God, there's no business anywhere in there. Okay. I could have not cycled. Where are you playing? So are we playing in Baltimore? You're so old, Archmage. Okay, so they cycled the Street Wraith. Here comes an Angler. Okay, I'm gonna just block. One of these. My opponent has a fetch land, but we gotta try to mitigate some of this. Just we're just dead on the board. We just didn't draw a threat there, which sucked. We could have shaved, yeah. You know? 
that would have worked out. All right. So against Hollow One, I'm not exactly sure how to sideboard in this matchup. I think I want all my stubborn denials. And I want this K command. I don't believe I want these fatal pushes. I have lightning bolts to handle the little guys. Um, I can probably cut a Snapcaster Mage. This doesn't really have a Snapcaster Mage kind of matchup. I could bring in Lava Man to help ping up, pick off some little guys, but that also seems kind of like small ball. Yeah, I think this is what we're gonna do. We're just gonna bring in just the stubs. Just the stubs and another K command to deal with a hollow one. Not having graveyard hate is rough, but at least we're on the play here. And I can discard spell uh, a real explosive looting effect. All right, we're gonna keep this. I actually don't mind, I'm just gonna Serum Visions on one as I don't mind double Ley Line of the Void, okay. Yeah, so now we're gonna hope my opponent. I'm surprised they played both of them. That seems pretty loose. Okay, we don't want either of these. So now we're actually kind of rooting for a Burning Inquiry. Yeah, keeping, playing two of these in this deck seems, or playing them both on turn zero seems kind of loose. Okay, so they hit looting. They need another cycle effect in order to get hollow one in play. All right. I'm gonna do this now. Okay, we hit watery grave bloodstained mire. Okay. Opponent is rude. They enacted their game plan. These Snapcasters are gonna be decent 2 1 beaters. I'm trying to hold my fetch land. Alright, nice. So, this is our last. We're gonna get our third watery grave. And then I think I'm gonna get a steam vent. Our hand is like incredibly blue. Just the way Archmage likes it. And I do think I'm going to double, like, if my opponent has a lightning bolt here, I think I'm going to double stub. Like, I just have to protect this thing. Like, I'm not winning the game without this. And they already, like, mulliganed here. So I think we can get away with it. Kicking on it. How's it going, Armada? Okay, you pay... Have an ugly way to do it, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Alright, they just had a fatal push too. That's rough. Alright, we're gonna just wait here. I should have. I guess I could have done that on my main phase. My opponent's playing all their lands, which seems odd. So they ditch two cards, hollow one. I'm just going to stub this. This makes it so they need a third cycle card to deal with this hollow one. And like this stubborn denial is not getting any better without a death shadow in our hand. Then we're going to flash the Snapcaster Mage in and start the beats. So if they have Street Wraith, now they can play hollow one. Yeah, there it is. Okay, let's get this in play. I probably should have, let's see here. All right, let's Serum Vision. All right, so we drew another Denial. This has been rough for the home team. Jarvel is actually OP. All right, get that Adept out of there. 
This is gonna get tough. I need to find a way to deal with. I think I've got to take six. And we're just going to trade with this, take two, and then hopefully find a way to get this thing out of here. He's in Thought Scour first. No, because Armand, if I want to keep a card on top, I can Thought Scour them. And then draw my top card. We're just going to flash the Snap Custom Agent and trade. We just got wrecked here, like our opponent, like we didn't find a threat in game one and then our opponent got us with a ley line here. But you don't want to Thought Scour then because of Phoenix and Looting Right. I will Thought Scour, not ideally, but I want, if like, I need an answer to this hollow one so that this thing doesn't come back that turn. So like, it's not ideal, but sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. That's gonna make this tough. Yeah, we're just we're just we're just super dead here. Yeah, I mean that's when you know times are tough, right? That one that one did not really work out that well for the home team. I don't really know how to side I'm not really comfortable sideboarding against that deck. Like am I supposed to have these rejections in? That seems real super narrow, but it stops their nut draws. Like, am I supposed to bring these in? Or if they're Anger of the Gods, bring those in? It's just like the deck is so, the deck does so many attacks from like two very unique angles that don't interact with each other. I kept the command in, right? I didn't board it out. If I did, that was, that was a mistake. That was an exclamation point punt. If I did. All right, I will lead off. This is a hand where we are likely gonna bolt ourselves. We're just going full dipshit with this hand. Blackleaf Cliffs. Blackleaf Cliffs. So we're either playing against Mardu, Pyromancer, or Jund. Now I kind of don't want to go full Moron. Because this game's likely to go long and I need my resources. Let's go get Watery Grave. All right, I'm gonna run a Death Shadow out here to get Mert after I cycle this Street Wraith. I don't really wanna hit any more lands, so that's why we're fetching prior to this happening. Blood Crypt. I don't wanna be super aggressive in my life total after this. I don't wanna, it, it does happen from time to time. Like sometimes it's just like, and in a matchup like this, it's not right to do because I think you're gonna need all your resources, but there are certainly matchups where you should speed the clock up, speed the game up and just bolt yourself. There's another discard spot to pick this thing, okay. I think it would've been better for my opponent to looting, Jesus Christ. I think it would've been better for my opponent to looting and then, all right. Um, I guess there's no reason. So I draw a land off the Serum Visions, I'm in trouble anyway. Okay, so we hit Nasty. So let's... I actually need to clear the way. So I think we're gonna put this on top and we're gonna put this on top. And then we're gonna get Gurmy Boy in play. Yeah, we'll ditch this Thought Scour, because we've got another one coming. Hey Johnny, how you doing tonight?
I'm just gonna like probably bolt a lingering souls token here. As god awful as that feels to do. Like we just gotta chew through these. <coughs> What's going on, Nilla? Thanks for checking out my stream. I still can't see anything. Like, like my Twitch screen is all nuts. I'm gonna leave this swamp in my hand to be able to get rid of it with K command. So we effectively traded that Lingering Souls for our Lightning Bolt and then an attack phase. And even though they got some card advantage off the looting with it, like, it's kind of the best we can ask for in game one. I already have reloaded my dashboard once or twice here and it just comes in. Like, it always, it sits here and says like, zero followers. Okay, it's, it's, it still doesn't show any information. But you have more Lingering Souls coming, that's great. Okay, so because we're not short on mana, I'm gonna wait here before I just fire one of these off. Son of a bit. We milled over two Snapcaster Mages, gosh. They're so good in this matchup. If I put a double blocks, I'm going to dismember one of these because I think that, that's just them telegraphing a lightning bolt. It's just one block, okay. It's kind of to hope my opponent just has nothing for the rest of the game in order to have a halfway decent shot here. Thought sees. All right, we're just gonna take out this thing. They take my battle rage. I probably should fetch. Here comes one, two, three, four. So they need one more land in order to revel me. In order to give me the bedlam. All right, they don't seem to really have a lot going on. Though we're down two Snapcaster Mages, so this game's gonna be really tough to win. We can draw Colorons coming off the top. That's probably our best draw at this point. Yeah, that one's not. We do not need to draw another Polluted Delta. Why don't I be a mod? Are you ready for that kind of responsibility, Johnny? Well, okay, yeah, I mean, that's being like pretty results oriented, right? Because for every good card you mill over, you also mill over a card you don't want, you know? Like if these thought if these Snapcaster mages were like thought seized, then the quality of our deck would just be like randomly better, you know? You wanna hit a Snapcaster Mage. Snapcaster Mage or Colagon's Command. Real bad. I know it's pausing on my upkeep, which probably means they terminate. We're going to K command. K command plus lightning bolt, sure. I'm going to ditch this delta. It gives them some information, but they at least, um, at least this allows us to play around moon. Okay, so that's pretty decent. So I guess we're just going to start by snap serum visioning. I'm going to keep, again, just keep this swap in my hand. All right, we don't need these. Nice. Probably gonna fed the revel army. Because now it's only cost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so it's just free for them to do it at this point. Actually, I'm not gonna know anything about their hand. What if you have garbage in your hand going to Delso? I don't know, the argument for looting. 
is there. Which is not a popular card. I think I'll pick up. It might, for sure. Like, I just haven't played with it enough to know whether it's good or not. I don't think I have the time to figure that out. All right. We're going to play our homeboy. I probably will not looting next league, Johnny. All right, so he's just doing this to make a token. My opponent knows my hand. So we do have some ways to win this. Like, if my opponent attacks, geez. Okay, so what should I do here? If I take five, go to five, my opponent bolts me. Yeah, I think we're just gonna take this. If my opponent's got runner, runner, bolt here, then like, so be it. And now we have outs, providing they have nothing, which I'm just gonna play if they have nothing because there's not a lot that I can beat. All right, we're just gonna hold back. At least now this can block this. I can see what, what it does there. Like, it, it's, it's card disadvantage on the front end, which can be a little awkward for a deck that runs on such slim margins as Death Shadow. But I can definitely see how it filters incredibly well in the late game. I mean, like, Faithless Looting makes this deck, right? Block, block. Okay, so we're still, like, Battle Rage is still an out here. I think we're going to be adults and just take care of this. I'm actually going to do it with my opponent's upkeep. So if they're sitting on a Coligon's Command, they, they get to burn their mana away. Doing it like this. This is just like for leverage, I guess. And block, block. Yeah, so here comes the commander. This is a Blood Moon. It's a Blood Moon, okay. That's no big deal because we have the Swamp. And it's not like we're in the market for lowering our life total much lower. I just need one more creature. I need something to enable an attack. I just can't. Like I can abyss one of these, and then I have to chump this more than likely because of like a blood moon. Or because of a lightning bolt. Though I guess I could start forcing the issue because if they top deck a Lingering Souls and I don't hit the second battle rage or a lightning bolt, I'm in a lot of trouble. Or a second battle rage or a snapcaster. Block. They have to abyss this, so I jump here, go to one. They need, but if they just have a removal spell on their turn, they kill me. So I think we're just gonna hold off here. Yeah, this is where this looks. This is where this looks like the nut here. And then they go, they go down a card, but then they break even here. If they ditch a lingering souls, and this is just like, just very, very good for them. The guy that won the tournament, they ditched two lands. The guy that won the tournament played a planes. Are you gonna Pyromancer or are you just flashing it back? Looting is, this looting is very good for them. Like they just filtered through two lands. So removal spell, we bolt that. I guess we're gonna start attacking here. Because now we can beat a removal spell. I'm gonna assume their last card is good. You have to block. And then if they attack and hit here, then bolt it. Or if they go like, or I can just block this and then bolt this and hope they don't have an answer for this thing. Which is probably what I'm gonna do. Block and bolt. 
Yeah, it seems like it takes up the Thought Scour spot if you would like to play looting. I've been chatting with BMJ online, and he is a fan of lootings. I'm very surprised we're in this game. Collective Brutality, Escalate, Target Opponent Loses. Okay. So they're just gonna gain and drain us. So they have a lightning bolt here, which is good night, Irene. This is last card lightning bolt, man. What what's going on here? Wow. Wow, that is such a mega draw. My opponent like was playing scared and just didn't go for it. Always go for it or upkeep it, one of the two. If you're gonna wait for their turn, you have to upkeep it. You don't let me draw don't let anybody draw a card. Because we just stole one there. Okay, so against this deck, I like the Last Hopes, the Lava Mancers, the Kolagon's Command, the Radiant Flames. I don't love... I don't love the Fatal Pushes. I don't really want these Street Wraiths. I don't love... I want to keep one Battle Rage in because, like, it could be good late in the game, but this this card's like really risky and it's just the easiest way to lose. It's like the easiest way for us to win the game and the easiest way for us to lose the game. We don't want to cut a stub. I'm gonna bring a Liliana Laveil in on the play because it can edict a Pyromancer and then just help me kind of chew through some Lingering Souls tokens. And I'm definitely gonna board it out on the draw. I guess I could, we could leave both the Battle Rages in. Yeah, we're gonna leave both the Battle Rages in. It just like, you gotta be careful with it, but it's the best and the easiest, it's the best way to win and the easiest way to lose, so. Seer Visions for this, for that sour. You don't have any obstacles to unplay your armor since Storm and Madcap Moon. I've been a big, so once I figured out how to like, I think you, I think there's a trick. Yeah, we're gonna keep this hand. I think there's a trick to properly serum visioning with, with this deck. And when I figured that out, I like serum visions more than opt. I think that like, you have to hold, like the, as a general rule, you should be holding your street wraiths to use in combination with serum visions, unless you have nothing to do. And once you begin to pair Serum Visions and they hit a Ley Line, okay. All right, so that's what we're gonna do now. So we're gonna forgo our red sources for now. But as soon, what was I was gonna say, as soon as um I figured that out, I started to like Serum Visions much more. Ensnaring Bridge. That's an odd card to bring in. I'm going to take it, but it is still an odd one to bring in, considering, like, you know, K Command is one of our better cards in this matchup, and they know that. So it seems like they're playing into a sideboard plan that we have. Okay, so here comes Lingering Souls. You got it, sir. Okay, so we're going to be able to get nasty here. So I'm actually gonna fetch a steam vents. Thought scour myself. All right, that's a great draw. One, two, three, four. It hurts to delve over a snapcaster mage when we have, or delve a snapcaster mage when we have four Lilianas and, um, or two Lilianas and two Colagons commands after sideboard, but like, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do.
Syrian play in there. Sir, like, one of the most mopey plays in modern is like Snap Serum Visions. Okay, so is this a Terminate? Oh, it's a Young Pyro Master. So we're just going to take this here. We're going to get it while the getting's good, and we're not going to get greedy. Then next turn, I can go Serum Visions. I have three cards in my graveyard and three mana. So if I find something else to do, or street, I only have one street rifle for my deck. Um, yeah, like the play of Snap Serum Visions on turn three is probably like the most mopey play in modern. We're just going to hit this. Probably going to pay full retail on it. Let me first fetch here, and then I will Serum Visions. I know my opponents, my opponent ditched their Marsh Flats. They have a Windswept, they have a Fatal Push, and I don't know the other card. I'm going to get another, you know, I think I need more blue sources. I have one, two, three, yes, yeah, actually, I think I have to get a Blood Crypt. I just have many red sources in my deck, and I might want to go like red source, red, red, do other things, so. Just make sure I can't like snap Serum Visions on this turn if that's right to do, but I doubt that's what we're going to be doing here. Whoa, that's a good one. So I think we don't want this dismember, we do want this. Hit this. Well, there we go. All right, it's a little bit of redemption there after getting run over in our first match. I'll be right back. I'm just gonna grab some water. Yeah, visions is visions is better when you're not under stress. Opt is better like when you need something now. That's why I really like to sandbag. Like once I learned to sandbag my street wraiths, I became much more happy with serum visions because I can sort of build serum visions into a cantrip that can help me find what I need now. So if I don't, unless I have things to do, if I don't have anything to do with my mana, I will naked cycle a street wraith. But if I have things to do with my mana or I'm planning to set up a serum visions for like the next turn, I'll hold it. Unless I need to, like something's gotta happen now. Then, you know, everything goes up the window. Okay, found a match. I went over 15,000 views today. I know there's only 12 of you here checking this out today, but that's just, you know, kind of a cool little milestone. I'm going to ship this hand. This hand could be anything. Uh, I wish I had a blue source. I'm going to keep this. Probably put anything, I'm going to put that on top. There's a blue source. Yeah, I became much more happy with Serum Visions. So I'm assuming we're playing against like a red-white prism deck here. Or a white red taxes. I don't think Burn would lead on Sacred Foundry tapped on a keep on seven. So we could get screwed here. Like they have two chalices. That could be a lot of trouble. Okay, so we're playing against blue white red. And we're just gonna take the Snapcaster Mage. I have to protect my light total here. Okay, so Sulfur Falls. Right. So I can go to 10 and hit their path to exile, which is one, two, three, four, five. And if I hit a fetch line, I can play angler next turn. So I think that's all we're gonna do here. On top, I just said I'm gonna protect my life total, but that already went out the window. All 
Oh, they have another one. All right, that's kind of gross. We're going to take the other one. Now we're just going to have to try to play a little slower to set up Angler plus... Um, and they hit a land, too. What a tilt. Five. So we can... We can go fetch a basic here, get another blue source. Then we, but if I get another blue source, then I've only got one black source, which is really annoying. The serum engine sucks. Or the steam vents. I think I'm gonna get the island. I know my opponent's hand. Now we're just we're not gonna be cowards here. This is a no coward stream. I sh I guess I could have, but like the thing when I saw their verdict is that they needed to, they needed to draw two lands in order to turn verdict on. So. And like this path really efficiently handles my um, angler. And like they, they went rip rip, which is like pretty unfortunate. But at least this is why like it'll be better in sideboard matchups because these bolts won't be in my deck. So these bolts will be meaningful things to where that I can leverage um, I can leverage them tapping out on four. I can't really do that now. But and like, see, we're just drawing like all the removal here. It doesn't matter. Seems not be one. So, yeah. All right, let's search. We're just gonna bolt our opponent. I think we're gonna start stocking up our graveyard. So we're gonna be able to delve again. So it's spell snare and helix. Yeah, and it's just like we drew. This is the problem in game one. We we have a chance in game two, but game game one this is not this is not good. Yes, but what's it like two in a row with no cantrips in their hand, right? Like, I don't I don't know what the math is on that. But they got 25 lands, and they probably had 50 cards in their deck. So you gotta, you gotta hit runner, runner, that's one in four, right? So they have a spell snare, so the Snapcaster Mage isn't resolving. I'll try to do it at the end of their turn, I guess. What is this, white, white? They just don't have, they rents to have a red. I guess I could try it on their upkeep. But I guess if I do it on their upkeep, it lets them flip their search. But they're more than likely gonna flip their search anyways. Yeah, I think we're just gonna send this through on their upkeep, just to kind of harass their mana a little bit. But it's not, not even harassing their mana because of this, this search for us kind of I mean, we're not winning this right here, but. But we can at least stick into it for a little while. They went top top, which is not good. I think we're just gonna get that spell snare out of there. No. The problem is even if I draw a discard spell, I'm doing discard spell into nothing. So I think we're just gonna try to like force a little action here. If outside of this card alone, we're gonna this card for angler. You could have made the opponent no generally. I rather feeling that uh, feeling there you go. The top card is more important as far as the thought scoured waiting. But you thought scoured yourself when you thought scoured the thought that the card alone was in the sixth card for angler. Okay, so you think it's better to you think it's better to fill my opponent's graveyard, like the logic not search for his Kanta snap caster graveyard, as opposed to my own. All right, so let's hope this resolves. 
Hopefully our last card is not Cryptic Command. This messes up their Scry, which is kind of sweet. So they just went top top. Yeah, we're gonna get Cryptic Commanded. Okay. Alright, well you can't take it home with you. Nice. Electrolyze, okay. That gives him so many outs to kill me this turn. I'm gonna leave this lightning bolt for a Snapcaster Mage. I mean, we just gotta like, we're not beating anything, right? So we're just gonna hope that they don't hit here for the rest of the game. We're just gonna go snap Serum Visions and just try to find something. Don't be surprised they just killed me here. We're gonna activate search. Yeah, that's, that's no good. We have some bot on bot action here. They reveal lightning bolt. Okay. All right. So now we have the uphill climb here. Winning two games. This this matchup gets better for us after sideboard. Like we imp I'm not sure we're favorited, but we improve more than they improve. So we want this K command. We want these Lilianas, and we want these four counter spells. Eight cards. Cards we aren't interested in. Dismember is not good. Team or Battle Rage is not good. I like to cut some number of Street Wraiths. And I like to cut some number of Lightning Bolts. Because I want one Lightning Bolt to have Reach. And then I also want two ways to kill Colonnade. And I want to leave two Street Wraiths in my deck in order to just make sure that I have a way to gain card advantage with K-Command. Because like returning a Street Wraith to draw a card is important. So yeah, we have a better setup after sideboard. Like we have we have eight, we have six counter spells and Snapcaster Mages with some bomb three drops. So we just need to not get like, it's gonna, we can't keep a hand, we probably can't keep a hand that doesn't have a cantrip or can't interact with a rest in peace on two. I actually won a match against blue, white, red earlier, blue, white, red where they rune haloed my angler and they rune haloed my death shadow. So let's play first. This hand is not good, but I will keep it. I'm gonna cycle, this is where I'm gonna cycle my street wraith on one. I should have mulligan this. This has both of these in my hand. I was, I was zoned out there and wasn't thinking about what we're doing. I should have mulliganed. This is all just my fault here. I should have shipped my hand. Lava Mancer is great. Can you can you elaborate, Teddy? Can you elaborate on why Lava Mancer is great? So here I can play a turn two Death Shadow with a bolt myself up to counter my opponent's bolt, which I think is worth it. Alright. So now we're like a cantrip away from getting something going here. I guess I should have fetched a steam vents because this just gives it away. Yeah, that was stupid. So it's four damage because I cut bolts and passing lava mancer is terrible. So you're saying that lava mancer just sits there and that's that's okay. Alright. So we're just gonna get this path. No, we're gonna get as counted, okay. Should I bolt my opponent here? Yeah. All right, 
Okay, so this is gonna get steam vents. Let's clock in here for four. We actually we're putting some pressure on our opponents. They probably have a hollow, they probably have a path to exile for this death shadow. But like we can path this here. The threat of just got little interaction unless they are pathing lava grants and it also pressures the opponent very well, allows you to like instant speed damage gain. Okay. I understand what you're saying. So in a deck that also plays four anglers and four um you want that in a deck that plays four anglers and four snap catches at the same time, right? I think I'm just gonna snap bolt my opponent. Snap bolt, put them to seven, and we we make them path to exile next turn. If my opponent's got like spell snare and path to exile here, that's gonna be pretty sad. But with this fetch land, this is gonna make them answer this shadow. That's a pretty, that's a huge draw. So that's probably just game. Yep. So that was just like, we got out to a quick start on the play and we got lucky. Cause like, I usually don't like having, like, I will usually cut some number of Snapcaster Mages or Gurmag Anglers when I bring this card in. But maybe we can try it for science. I don't know what to cut though for it. How many spells do I have? I have three. I have three, six. Or three, eleven. Twenty five spells for Snapcaster Mage currently. <clears throat> yes, you want to be as threat dense as possible. So, in eight threats, four and four shadows, adding two more threats is important. All right, I'll, I'll buy this for science here. So, what do I want to cut? <clears throat> it's probably this. We probably can cut one lightning bolt if we want to try to bring this Grim Lava Mancer in. Our whole deck feels bad if they rip us. Why cut two street reds? Because the game's going to go long Russell Wilson and I don't want to hemorrhage my life total or get to a point where I top deck a street race when I'm at like five, you know? But I want to keep just enough in order to rebuy with my K commands or, or enable an explosive death shadow draw like we had. I don't really know what else I want to cut for the Lava Mancer. I think we're just going to leave one. I want two Fatal Pushes in here to be able to clear out Snapcaster Mages or clear out Colonnades. So I think this is our plan here. Why not cut a land? And why do you have Fatal Push? For, for, for Colonnade. Because sometimes it comes into like where if you can answer their Colonnade, they just don't have an effective way to kill you. Now this hand's very good. Let me keep this. He's going to lead off on the Inquisition to hopefully hit a search for his Kanto or a Wound Halo or a Rest in Peace. This is a hand where Rest in Peace just like ruins us. If they have double rip, I'm in a lot of trouble. <clears throat> okay, this is actually a pretty poor hand from our opponent, which is good for the home team. That's actually another very, that's a very good draw. So let's check this out. I'm gonna get a watery grave. All right, so now we're on the battlefield. I can't get a Gurmag Angler down and have, so they drew that Scalding Tarn, which is good to know. Oh, that's a really good draw. So let's, I'm going to Thought Scour now in case I hit a Street Wraith. I probably want to cycle it before combat. I'm not going to play that Serum Visions because we're looking to play this Angler and have Stubborn Denial up. So I don't want this Mire, I don't want this, this. I probably honestly don't 
Now, I think the Snapcaster is better than the Thought Scour. Okay, yeah. It's Colonnade, but if your opponent is attacking Colonnade, they have conceded the match, and are they trying to make a last-ditch effort? So I find I find that the, the, the matches against Jeskai play out in a couple different ways. Either they just don't attack you until the game's oh until you're just dead. Like they have got complete control of the game, and then having the fatal push doesn't matter. Okay. But then you have some of those matches. I hope my opponent top decks uh Supreme Verdict, I'm gonna puke. Um you have some of those matches where um you've matches where like you are like you get down there with your death shadows and they kind of like semi stabilize it without a lot of resources they just try to kill you with colony before you can rebuild and i think being able to eliminate that factor of the game has some value this is an upkeep so i'm gonna fight over this because i would like to have them not have this dispel over and then i can fight over something that matters like a um, like a Liliana or a Colorgon's Command. Like, I knew I was going to lose there, but I, I just want to... I, I'm okay losing there to get the Dispel out of my opponent's hand. Should get an Island. Okay, so I know my opponent's hand, so there's no sense in Thought seizing them. I drew another Angler, which is not good. We're gonna put this on the bottom. And we're gonna put this on top because it's just a redraw and it's gonna make our Death Shadow larger. And it's gonna help with Delve. There's the Sulfur Falls. Okay, so Snapcaster Mage Path to Exile it looks like. Yeah. That's okay, and we'll search. More mana is good when we've got two of these Delve cards in our hand. <coughs> no, we still drew it. Okay, so let's cycle this. That's gas. One, two, three, four. So I can play this tick up, roll down, get Snapcaster Mage next turn, and then play an Angler. How do I like lean on my opponent the best? I know the last card is Mountain. I think I want to get this thing down here right now. Because the Angler is theoretically three attacks away from getting us. I have a stubborn denial of my graveyard. So I'm actually just going to thought seize. See what my opponent's got. And then I'm going to rebuy the Snapcaster Mage. Logic not. Okay. Let's rebuy Snapcaster. Oh, I drew Death Shadow. So now Death Shadow is 7. And I can rebuy Street Wraith next turn. So let's get this Death Shadow back. Get this. Play this. And then I'm going to leave the Snapcaster in my graveyard. And like, just hope that they miss here. I probably could have sequenced that better. All right. They path that, which is not the end of the world. So I'm going to just take up with this. We have enough resources. <clears throat> now I need to draw like Cryptic Command, Snapcaster Mage. So I probably drew Cryptic. No, I can't even, I don't have enough. That was stupid, I should have attacked with that. I miscounted. I don't play with this card too often, so I do need to get the kinks out here. So what is this, they're gonna cryptic? Okay. Tap, draw. 
better because you currently know they had nothing. Yes, but like, then why commit all that to the Borg? You know what I mean? And lose my Liliana when I'm already this far ahead? Like, why I can keep my Liliana around and my opponent's already dead on board. I think I'm going to minus now. See if I hit this. I hit a fatal push. I was looking to hit, like, something that I could snap back. But I didn't. So now we're just going to pass. Give my opponent another draw step here. All right, there we go. We got out of it. Yeah, I missed the point with a lot of minutes. I did make a mistake, Teddy Jr. Yeah. Yeah, so I generally think that you're a pretty huge dog in game one. But as long as you can keep your graveyard intact, I think that these last hopes and these Colagons Command coupled with like the Snapcasters and a more tuned deck gives you a pretty good chance against Jeskai. Because they're actually like... Jeskai's not good at um, efficiently killing your creatures. They need like Path to Exile, Trace to Stubborn Denial after Sideboard when you have 4 and 4. And then Supreme Verdict's really clunky. So I think that I think that the Death Shadow deck, I think as it's built now with the main deck, I don't think you can build your main deck to have a good matchup against Jeskai. I think you need to have just a really robust sideboard plan. Speaking of robust, this is a super explosive Death Shadow draw. If my opponent's playing something that's not interactive, no, nope, so they're playing something that's pretty interactive. So Death Shadow draw is not good. We're gonna hold this street wraith in case next turn I draw. Well, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this right now because even if I draw a, uh, a serum visions next turn, I'm going to go serum visions death shadow more than likely. So I might as well cycle this now to get some information. I'm gonna hold that in case I can use it to counter a lightning bolt in the future. Okay, so we're playing against the spell color version. So what do they do here? They mulliganed. Oh no, they didn't. They they're on the flight. Uh, losing my mind. So I can deal with this spell queller. I currently can't deal with this crypt command. This snapcaster mage isn't doing anything, but this snapcaster mage will do stuff. And we're at a point where this cryptic is probably going to turn into like a tap cycle. So I think it's just like good to be an adult and take this snapcaster mage because the snapcaster mage just blows the game open if they have it. And we can work a way to make our opponent dance with this spell queller, not give them, with this Colagons command, we can give them business at the end of their turn, then kill it and use it on our turn. So I think this Cryptic's gonna be kind of irrelevant, just cycling. I think the Snapcaster Mage is how the game goes, goes to hell in a handbasket. And like, it's a very poor take right now, as opposed to this. But I do think that if this game is to go wrong, it's going to be on the back of this card here. You should just Thoughtseize first, get the information first. Yeah, I was going to Thoughtseize the entire time, Teddy. I was just wondering if I should save my Street Wraith or not. That was the only... Yeah, Queller, and Queller shot off by Dismember. That's why I said we can make them, we can make them dance, you know? Okay, so that's actually a really great draw. So let's... So now if my opponent did pick up anything, we're gonna know about it here. They picked up a second cryptic command. So we're just gonna take one of these. Chaining cryptics is not good. And I'm just gonna hold this street wraith. I guess we're gonna get blood crypt so that we have our red source and we don't have to take damage for it in the future. And our hand's not like it's especially blue or anything. Oh, this is a Geist. Oh my god. Oh my god, my opponent ripped a Geist. Okay, so at least we get to deal with this spell color now. So how do I win? The problem is they're just gonna be able to tap down my 
oh my god, this guy is just completely outdid all of like everything that I was trying to do with my life. It's like I need to cycle into a stubborn denial. I need to go like Inquisition hit a stubborn denial. And if I cycle this and I miss, they just go like tap your team, kill you. Oh, that was such a sick, that was like a, such a sick rip. How can you play this card when it's just like the, the format is like humans dot format. I have to cycle, right? I thought sees this away. They attack. They probably just like, If I draw Fatal Push, I'm in it. There's like no good way around this. Yeah, that just does kill me. Yeah. Oh, that's frustrating. Little fucking guys here. This little guys. Oh, we had this game. We had it. Then we didn't. Okay, so against this deck, this deck is much faster. So, well, okay. So, so my whole line, Russell, was that I cycle. I didn't even know what I could hit. To tell you the truth, like I go Inquisition, hit your. Um, Inquisition, the Spell Queller. Then I can attack with Death Shadow and I deal my opponent five points of damage. My opponent then cracks me for six and then they just go like upkeep, tap your angel and kill me. So I, I couldn't beat what they were doing. Attack, flash and snap, block Geist. Yeah, he is cryptic, but if he, but if he plans to tap shadow, but then like the angel kills me, right? So attack. Okay. I deal, I deal him five, right? So you're saying don't cycle. Inquis not Inquisition the Queller. So if I do that, so they just spell Queller my Snapcaster, crack me for six, right? I think if I have to Inquisition, and then I don't really know what else I can hit that actually wins me the game. Right. Okay, so I want these stubs. Let me just sideboard here. I want this Liliana. I want this Fatal Push because it deals with the Queller. I don't really know if I want Colagon's Command because it doesn't really interact well in combat. I think I could deal with these Lilianas because they're something that can like lock down one of their aggressive creatures. I just want to get rid of everything that hurts me. Uh, so, t what are you talking about, Teddy? So, are you talking about? We're talking about my main. Let's let's start from my main phase, where I have two mana up. I am at eight. I'm looking at this Geist. I know the three cards in their hand are. Wait, hang on. I know the three cards in their hand are land. Are land spell queller, and cryptic command. So, if I go Inquisition, Inquisition, tap, if I go Inquisition, take your, yeah, they were tapped out. So, if I go Inquisition, um, take your Spell Queller, Attack on Tower 5, play Snap Pass. Okay, my main phase. Your opponent can only, can only take us to two no matter what. And they just go tap, attack me for six. Then I am at two. They're at 15. And I need to find four points of damage. That's basically what you're saying. Try to find a lightning bolt. Lightning bolt doesn't do it. 
But then I don't have a draw, right? Because I take eight, I'm at two, I can't cycle my street race. I would like to play first, yes. This hand's very good. Right, am I, am I missing something here? You can block snap on Geist and, and Angel, and Queller hits you to two. I'm just saying, Teddy, they go, on their main phase, they go tap your dude, okay? They just tap out, tap your guys, crack me for eight. They're at 15, I go to two, my shadow is 11, my snapcaster is two, and I'm at two, okay? So, I guess if I, that gives me the chance to draw lightning bolts, right? And if I just flash in, if I just flash it in, then they just quell it in, or cryptic it, right? I'm gonna have to pull this game up here. I could do that, Russell Wilson, but like, they just go, again, they have the option to just go cryptic, tap your guy, okay, swing in for six, and then I don't, then I need to find four points of damage, and I can't interact with their, um, I guess I can't dismember unless I hit a land, because I can't pay life. So this hand's really good. I think I just take a Snapcaster, and then I'm probably gonna end up trying to go Snap Inquisition, and then Thoughts using this Jace, and leaving them with these paths. Snapcaster or Command. I think we. I think I have to go pull this back up because I. Th I think after this game here, we're gonna go pull that match up there, and then try to figure out exactly what was going on here. Because I think that I did make a, a play where I could have given myself that. The freaking logic knot. So now I have to take this logic knot. Because I don't want to get my logic knot. Thoughtseize here. Next turn, Inquisition, snap Inquisition. Hopefully hit a land. Yeah. So we can kind of pick my opponent's hand apart to where they just had paths. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that I probably made a mistake, but that's because, like, I actually just don't think that I had draws that could beat what they had going on. There's a chance, though, that I had, that I could have played something in order to be able to, so that if I peeled a lightning bolt, I could have killed them, though. So that's the chance there. Okay. All right, so we're gonna cantrip first, see what we have coming here. Okay, so we have two lands, which is great. So I'm gonna end up shuffling one of these away. So I guess I'll give myself the option to fetch a basic, though I don't think that's going to happen. So I'm just gonna take the Jace, and then next turn I'm going to snap um, Inquisition the Snapcaster. There's no need to like go hand with my life total because it's not like a Death Shadow is gonna stick at any point here. Play this, target Inquisition. So I don't want to go down to nine, probably. There's probably no reason not to. Now, I think this game's gonna last a little while, so I think we're going to just try to play for a little bit of a long game here. Okay, Snapcaster. One of their paths just turned into, turned into just a straight up, like, plow with upside by doing that, but I think that's okay to keep our life total respectable. 
So there's the mountain. So I'm gonna do this now so that if my opponent tries to kill this, it doesn't mess up my scries. The Serum Vision, they can mess my scries up, but hopefully with the Thought Scour, I can try to mitigate that a little bit. Let's go off of this. Okay, so there's Thought Seed. So I do want this Angler, so we're gonna go like this. Put on top. I'm going to Thought Seize my opponent. When they go to path this Snapcaster Mage, I'm gonna Thought Scour them and draw the Angler. And if they just hold this path. No, I really want them to path the Snapcaster. That's basically all I want. Maybe I might bolt them at the end of the turn to try to get them to think like, hey, let's not take any more bleeding from this. Are they taking path or snap? If you deploy two threats, Jace is hysterically bad. Also playing bolt makes Jace sub subjectively not picking what the thought seizes. So I don't like play, taking the path. Um, I don't like leaving them. I was thinking if you like, I, I think that I can play around what they're doing here. That Jace is something where the game's going slow, and I didn't have any threats at that point, right? So like, I think that the game was leaning towards playing a longer, playing longer, right? Electrolyze one and one. Okay. They're not pathing snap. Well, they might, right? We should give our opponents the opportunity. We're just gonna leave this thought scour. So they played this island, right? What do they play? Reveals their hand containing island. They played an island. Okay. So let's. It sucks that we milled over a little on the veil. We don't need a, this. We don't need the discard anymore because we're all gonna be playing off the top here in a second. And I can ditch this thought scour because I'm gonna fill it up with the fill it up again. I just think that like Well they they might like they might have, you know. And I, I could have like I think I think the game was moving towards I think with like how all of our cards lined up, I think the game was moving towards like Oh, they drew a Supreme Verdict. Oh, that untapped just totally means they drew a Verdict. Unless they don't want to get stubbed. Alright, well, I guess they're playing around stubs, so we're not going to tap out. Five looks like all right, sweet. All right, so now I'm gonna thought scour myself. So on the main phase, you might find some sort of interaction. We didn't. We've milled over another Liliana. That's just that sucks. Also, verdict can't be countered. So why would they play around stub? I guess I must have misspoken there and thought that I wasn't like communicating what I was like meaning to say there. Cause that's a dumb thing that if that was on my mind, that wasn't good. And that happens when you stream sometimes, but God, we are, I guess it's turn eight, we've hit six lands. It does suck we milled over two Lilianas though. Well, they're not gonna brainstorm, right? If they can play Jace, like, they're, like, I think that the, the easiest way we lose that game, the Helix me. Okay. That's actually kind of a big play because it makes it so that I, it gives them two draw steps. They fire up here. Okay. So inside of combat. Before they attack. Let's 
So now we attack. Hope our opponent cracks a fetch land and we kill him. Yeah, I mean a brainstorm is still good. Like there, but I think they would they would plus it. I'm just worried that they can play like I think the easiest way, like my opponent's hand's great, my hand's great, I think the game is going to go long. And I don't think there's a way that like I don't think it's worth me taking a bunch of removal spells when I don't have any creatures. At that point that I did that thought seize, I didn't have any creatures. So I had no pressure to put on. Did I get the sideboard last time? No, I left these battle rages in. Holy shit. Holy shit. Now that I saw Jace, I think I'm gonna bring in a disdainful stroke. Because that they have Jace and Cryptic Command. This command's not great. So maybe it's worth just getting rid of this. No, I guess I've got my own thought scours. They brainstorm and lock themselves. There's no fetch land, which means they would force to brainstorm next turn unless their opponent found a fetch land in the top three. I think Teddy, that I'm just sitting here and I'm playing like, here's here's how the game gets bad. The game gets bad with both me and my opponent exhaust ourselves out of resources, and then my opponent has just the ultimate chomp. Like there's no game, there's no card. Like if I had some creatures. I would probably take the Jace, but even then, if those creatures are delve cards, I still kind of have to take Jace, because Jace is vir a virtual removal spell for them. But I think you're just not respecting the Jace in a hand that lines up where I don't have any threats, my opponent has removal, so I need to take away the cards in their hand that, like interact with what I'm doing. And those are the Snapcaster Mages because that makes them reuse their removal if I draw if I draw creatures or reuse their cantrips or counter spells. Yeah, I'll keep this. This is a turn, maybe a turn, turn two angler. One, three, this is four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it's a turn two angler. We're getting nasty. So they're gonna see visions. I do appreciate all the insight and ideas that you're bringing to the chat, though, Teddy. We we are butting heads slightly, but I do. I think you're. I think you're bringing a lot of good, good stuff to the to the stream now, which I appreciate. All right, that shadow's a good draw. Okay. I think I'm going to put this Inquisition on the bottom and put this Serum Visions on the top. Because I kind of want to slow down a little bit. And like next turn, I want to check for a Geist. And I want to be able to play this Gurmag. Like, I don't want to play this Gurmag Angler and turn my Snapcaster Mage off. So that might change based on what my opponent does here, but I think I am going to want this Serum Visions. Plus, I would like a second Black Source. Back foot instead of forcing them to awkwardly use their top deck removal if we draw creatures. Well, they're not their top deck removal, but like, we're just, we're just leaning on them, right? So let's Thought Seize them first. If they counter this, this is okay. Which they're going to do. With a negate, okay. Okay, so there's our second black source. Put on the bottom, put on top. So next turn, I can play Angler and Shadow. Especially if my opponent, okay, so my opponent doesn't have anything here. So we're just gonna lead off with another discard spell. I wonder if they boarded out their colors. Holy shit. All right, well, we're going to take this Detention Sphere, and then we're going to slam this Angler. But holy shit, they got a, they got a Bane Slayer Angel. That's not too scary, but, like, I think I'm going to just fetch a basic. I think we're just going to, like, 
not get killed here. And if my opponent wants to spend two lightning bolts to get rid of that, and that's fine. Especially when our one of our plans here is to snap thought sees this Bane Slayer Angel. Yeah, right? Isn't that why I found the fetch land? Like I kept the fetch land on top Russell? Alright, that's another great draw. Okay. So now we're just going to Snapcaster Mage. We're going to Thought Seize the Bane Slayer Angel. Yeah. That's a big, that's a big girl. There's a big girl there. So I'm going to just leave them with this cryptic because likely they're going to have to start crypticking before they can use this dispel and the cryptic. So this, we're just going to like lean on them and try to trade resources, I think. Yeah, so they both snap cast major, which is probably the right thing for them to do. Yeah, no, 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 we gotta, we gotta, the Bane Slayer Angel's gotta go. We're talking about turn two? Yeah, I'd have to look at it, I'd have to check it out. So do I want to just get greedy here? No, because they can just dispel it, so. They're basically only countering something that messes with my angler. That, that, that messes with nasty. With nasty Germasty. Two cards on top. Okay. If we're going to drew a path to exile, we could be in trouble. Yeah. Alright, so let's. All right, we're gonna start off by cantripping here. Oh, I think I'm just gonna play, so how do I get screwed here? I get screwed here if my opponent literally, because they, they didn't hit a land last turn. So if they, my opponent drew, I'm assuming they kept land, land on top of their deck. If my opponent drew into, or they kept land cryptic, so if my opponent drew into exactly Supreme Verdict, then I get punished. And I think that if I play this Death Shadow and they don't have Supreme Verdict, then, then I'm all set. Baltimore. On these sort of spots where our, I love Rixus, we achieve interaction, threat points, and where our opponent has a hard time. Yeah. So we're gonna play this. Play this before we play our land, just to conceal some information. I'm going to Baltimore, by the way. Yes, I do, I do like how cheap everything is. So if they, so by the fact that they're pausing here means that they definitely didn't draw Supreme Verdict. Because if they drew Supreme Verdict, then their play is easy. Just land, slam Supreme Verdict. Whoa. Nothing. Okay. I don't think I'm going to move. Okay. Stub, Snapcaster, Stub. I don't think I need this other land in play, so. Oh, no, I, I muffed up. I guess I didn't really mess up because if their whole plan, like I can't stop a Snapcaster Mage and I can't go like Snapcaster Chump. So let's stub this. This gets dispelled. Yep. Yeah. Snapcaster Mage. 
target stubborn denial stub this then we just don't move and then when they go to bolt this we crack our fetch land Yes. All right. Where were we here? This is the match you're talking about. Let's just do this quick here. This is going to derail the stream slightly. I want to get. I want to. I want to check this out. I'm assuming what game we're in. No, we're in game one. We're in game one, right? Game one is where the issue, where the issue was. Okay, so I'm old six. Keep that. Okay, here we go. It's just can we move turns? No, whoa. Okay, so we're turn two here. Okay, so we're moving here. Find Thoughtseize, Street Wraith. Into Thoughtseize, take their creature. Where is this? So, I know they have. This isn't the right game. Are we in the wrong game here? I feel like we're in the wrong game. I want to. I want to get this. If I if I egregiously messed up, I want to get this right here. Come on. I have to play these turns. What is this? Okay, so there's my polluted delta. I don't think this is the right. Yeah, this is it. It's in game, you think it's, yeah, you think it's game two? But what I do, do I just win this one? Yeah, this isn't it. Because I, I never got below seven life, eight life, yeah. It was game one of a different match. So this right here. Was it this one? Game one loss, right? It's this one. It's where I lost game one, so it's gotta be this one right here. Cause this is the one we just played. But I just... Skip the turn, skip the turn, skip the turn. Probably gonna lose it. Okay, so there's a verdict. Serum visions. Match. I just played match four, right? All right. Oh, and what? That was a long game. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you're, you're right. You guys are right. You guys are all right here. It was game of this one. Yep. It was a long. It took a long time to get through these games, so I didn't. I didn't pay attention here. Okay. No, you guys are right. Okay. So I currently know these cards in my opponent's hand. We go through here. I'm at eight. So I know my opponent's got. That's their hand, they just drew Geist. Planes. Okay, so let's go back to my turn here. Okay, so right here. So I can go Inquisition. 
My plays are Inquisition, take the Queller, attack. Okay. Then my opponent, put them to 15. I can't do that because I put them to 15 and then I die unless I draw a Stubborn Denial. Because they just go like, tap your team. Um, if I attack. So my first line of play is Inquisition. I think you just click on three. Okay, Inquisition, take a Spell Queller. And then if I attack, then my opponent puts me to two. No good. So, and then I'm dead on the next turn because I can't dismember the token and block this. So that play doesn't work. I think you should have Inquisition and not attack. So let's say we Inquisition, take a Spell Queller, not attack. Okay. So what stops my opponent from going cryptic, tap you attack, okay? And then on the next turn, unless I draw a link, because then it puts me to two, but then I guess I flash the Snapcaster Mage and eat this, and then I'm at four. Yeah, so that was the play, right? Or tap bounce, yep. Yeah. But if I don't, but then I can at least have a chance to ambush. Like if I go, but the problem is if I don't attack and don't, if I don't attack, then my opponent goes cryptic tap. If I don't attack or, or inquisition, my opponent just goes cryptic tap your team, start attacking. Or my opponent just passes and plays a spell queller at the end of my turn, my next turn. And then I'm pretty dead because of that. Attack, snap go, opponent takes us to two. You main phase the snapcaster mage, and then my opponent goes tap team, draw a card. Yes. That was my session. It gave us more outs. It didn't get into it. We gave us more outs. So what does that do? So attack 15. Let's just say they go attack me. Let's just say they go cryptic, tap your snapcaster mage, or bounce your death, tap, tap your snapcaster mage, bounce your death shadow, attack. That we, I mean, we, we don't even beat that, right? If my opponent sees around it, because they just go like, Tap Snapcaster Mage, Bounce Shadow. Yeah, I just don't think we... Like, I obviously, like... I saw that we did not have very many outs here, and I just kind of copped out and thought I needed to cycle into something to get lucky, or, like, I thought I was just dead. So there were probably better plays than I did. But... Yes, doing nothing. Yeah. The play I made was poor. Because I was basically frustrated and didn't have, didn't think that I had anything going on here. In which I didn't. Like, like even if we do attack, play snap on our main phase, they just go tap Snapcaster Mage, tap your team, bounce Death Shadow, attack. And then that puts us to two. And then the Geist and the Shadow and the Angel are lethal. And we can't interact with this Angel unless we draw Fatal Push. So if I draw, fa I give myself the opportunity to draw Fatal Push if I do it like that. But then they have the Spell Queller because we didn't Inquisition them. So I would have to go Inquisition, Death Shadow, but then I'm tapped out. I'd have to draw two cards. Yeah, so I'm dead either way. It, it, it is just a shitty spot, but... I definitely caught, I definitely like... Now that I sit here and think about it, I don't think there's a way that we can win if our opponent plays correctly with what's on the board. But I obviously could have done more than I did. But you live and learn. Yeah, our opponent has to make like an egregious error in order for us to win that game. Oh, nice. Want to play here? Playing for the money. All right, his hand's very good. So, one, two, three. 
one, two, five, one, one. I hate Gurmag math. So one, two, five, six. So we can do Gurmag plus interaction next turn. So I'm actually just going to, I'm not gonna cycle this yet. We did win with Teamer Battle Rage. Even if they bounce our shadow. Burn, baby, burn, burn. This is just an easy lava spike. We just gotta like throw them off of their plan as much as possible. Just make sure so they don't play a one drop and their hands just clog. So these lightning helixes are gonna be able to gain them some like they, they drew a one drop. What a tilt, dude. Gross. Oh now I can't win. 10, 8. Right, because I have to go 10. Maybe I'll find a basic here. Maybe we can raise, yeah, we could. All right, so we did hit a basic, which is nice. Saves us a point, but I don't think it's ultimately gonna matter. But at least we're on the board. Yeah, I think we're dead too. We needed, we needed them to not have a one drop spell there because now it's just Searing Blaze, my dude. Maybe my opponent will just like lose their mind. They're just gonna helix me three times. Yep, Searing Blaze. Not even sure if they Searing Blaze that's what to do. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that had to be a Shadow, right? Because 5, 9, they go back up to 12. Even Battle Rage next turn kills me. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna give it the old college try here, but I think we're pretty dead. If they hadn't have drawn a one mana burn spell there, I think we had a chance. Cause I'd be at nine, they'd have to resolve three spells. Monastery Swift Spear. Another Swift Spear. Okay. Whoa, okay. So this gives me an out, right? Yeah, this gives me, we just let this go here. And then we bolt our opponent and we just rip a battle rage like a professional here. That's, that gives me another turn. Kind of the, delays the inevitable, but. Can't attack. Yes. How you doing there, Magic Hero? Did you watch the YouTube video of me getting waxed last night? So this gives me a couple draw steps. Or one, this gives me look at my two battle rages and I have got like eight cantrips to look at, I don't know. Is 
That doesn't do it, unfortunately. Give my opponent, give my opponent the opportunity to die here, but. Oh man, it was bad. It was a tough league for the home team. Mm -hmm. Maybe my opponent will do something weird here. I don't know. They just kill me with this on the stack. Yep, you got it, sir. You got it. So I don't actually have a lot in my sideboard for this matchup. I'm pretty light on it. One less life we could have drawn Bolt off the right. Yeah. So I like the Fatal Push, and I like the Stubborn Denials, and I like the Liliana, and I usually just cut the Street Wraiths. So these are pretty bad. I wonder if Lava Mancer is better than this. Probably Lava Mancer is not because I'm not going to have the time to like activate it and deploy like an angler or something like that. I guess I could cut one of these for this maybe. I could just like cut a Snapcaster and do it. I don't exactly know what my sideboard plan is here. Yeah, I just, I didn't play a Brutality in this deck. I could just kind of Snapcast and Rage and play this guy. All right, we're gonna go like this. This is like super greedy, I think, but we're gonna try it. Why do you like Lily of oh, the Veil? It's just something, right? Like, I mean, I have so many cards that I think are pretty poor that it's a card that on the play can, like, sounds pretty good. It's a it's a hand that, it's a card that on the play can do some work, I think. Mm-hmm. I did, I did ditch all of Dismember, right? Yeah. So, I think I've got a Fetch Shock here. Because I do want to be able to get this Death Shadow online quickly. Oh yeah, Shrine. I forgot these decks were playing that for a little while. So I think I'm going to get Steam Vents. I think it's important. Like, I usually hate doing this, but I think it's important for me to get all my colors here. Thoughtseize. And I'm immediately punished for it. I don't, think I, I don't think I want any of these. I don't think I have time for any of this. Yeah, I just don't have time. I'm probably just gonna go, I guess I could have left the land on top. I think I'm gonna get Goblin Guided. I think Snapcast is better than Veil in most scenarios. Yeah, I can buy that. I can buy that. I just thought that I was going to bring in the... Uh, I just decided to try the Lava Mancers. And I don't think... I think that like I can cut some cards for the Lava Mancers. Alright. Could have left the land on top. Could have gotten all that sweet value. Actually, this is going to let me play the Shadow next turn, which is kind of nice. No, it's not. Damn it. I guess I just bolt this and Thought Seize my opponent. Yeah, I just do not see how we're winning this.
I wanted to have a red source that also cast a blue source. I wanted to mess up my fetch land. It's going to cost me the game. I guess I gotta take this idol on. Volt and Serum, find another Death Shadow, double Death Shadow on turn three. I think I gotta get rid of this idol on. I need to find a Battle Rage. So maybe I can take something like this lightning bolt here to kind of break up their turn efficiency. I'm just gonna take a title one. We should be good now. My OBS says we're good. All right, so we're gonna pass. I'm gonna bolt this. They're probably gonna play Lava Mancer and then Lightning Bolt, hold it. Give me the chance to draw a card. I need like a battle rage. All right. Liliana might be able to do a little bit of work here. Nine. Play burn before. Burn. Should we search star? Or say. Would you do the midnight as a sweep off the lethal? I don't know, it's it's tough. It's just tough all the way around, right? So I wonder what this play is from my opponent. Is this like a main phase Boros charm? Okay. So this gives me a shot, right? So they have Lava Manta, Grim Lava Manta, Lightning Bolt, Skull Crack, one more card. So I need to find a Battle Rage, I think. Like, I know. I need to find Battle Rage or Stubborn Denial. Okay. Put on the bottom. Put on top. So now if I play... I play this Death Shadow, play this Tapped. If I play this Death Shadow and play Tapped, my Death Shadow is six. They're at 17, so it's only 12, five. So I'm gonna need to find more ways to deal damage to myself. So I actually think I need to Inquisition them, play Death Shadow, go to five. Hopefully they don't have one drop Lightning Bolt, they don't have one drop removal spell, one drop removal spell. And then look to next turn, go Thought Scour into damage. And then Battle Rage over the top. You go Tap Grave Shadow, go. Tap. 
have to grave Shadow go. Can't lose to anything. But are we winning this game if we have to attack twice with our Shadow? I don't really think that we are winning this game if we have to attack. Like we're like right if we have to attack with Death Shadow twice, I don't think I win, right? I don't necessarily lose to land if I have a discard spell, right? So it's supposed to be a five. They're at seventeen, so theoretically, I would have to have my Death Shadow be nine power, so I'd have to be able to go down to four. So if I find any way to deal damage to myself next turn. I can get them. The problem is I need to be able to go to three. I need to go to four. I need to get to four. I need to be able to do three points of damage to myself. You're pretty sure your opponent is casting a spell on their end step. We don't even have to double brick, right? Can't we just choke them? Are we winning this game if we attack twice? And that's, I don't think we are, right? Because it's just two turns. I think it's disc, I think it's discard and death shadow. Putting us to five, going to five puts us dead on board with Bolt and Lava Man. Our end step. I'm so I'm so confused, Teddy. So we go Lava Man. We are dead on. Yes, I get that we are dead on board. Here, the Lava Man doesn't have act, an activation, right? Even if they don't have a land, right? I just take the light. I take a lightning bolt, right? I, I'm doing this to take lightning bolt. Yeah, I think I thought sees this. I'm, I'm playing. I thought sees this lightning bolt, and then find a way to deal damage. Hopefully, the card underneath Thought Scour deals damage to myself. Yeah, I think, I think we're thought seizing the bolt. Yeah, we're just thought seizing this lightning bolt here. And then my opponent, if I find a way to deal damage to myself, they're eight, they have 18 points effectively, then I'm good. Suspend Rift Bolt, Lava Lancer. So now we go like this. We have out Stubborn Denial, a Fetch Land, or Shock Land. A Stubborn Denial, Fetch Land, or a Shock Land. And that's how we do it. I think that was right to do. I mean, obviously it worked out, but I think that that was the right play. Like, I don't think I was killing them with two turns. All right, Liliana's not going to draw. I'm trying to find a way to not to like evaluate that attack without being result oriented, because like I think that even how it winds out, it works, but I'm not sure whether it was right or not. Okay, I think this is going to be pretty difficult to win on the draw. I think we stole one. 
but I think this is going to be a pretty – this is just a pretty gross matchup when we're on the draw here without brutalities. So I don't – I actually just, like, don't expect to win this match here, which is kind of sad, but – our opponent's draw was really clumpy there. Well, that's the thing about, like, the awkward part about playing burn when you're playing against Death Shadow is, like, you don't want to cast any burn spells until you can go, like, burn, burn, untap, burn, burn, you know? Yeah, I think we keep this, right? We have two Lightning Bolts and a Death Shadow. This is very good against a creature draw. I think I'm supposed to keep this. This is the I need two shot. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think I can throw this back. Right? Like, I, I, if my opponent plays a dude, attacks me, then I can play a shadow on two while killing this and having a lightning bolt up to bolt myself if they try to kill the shadow. Oh, I don't really want a mulligan. I really don't want to mulligan. I don't think I'm going to. My instinct says keep this because this is a hand where we have the opportunity to thread the needle here. Even though I understand where I, this is one of those hands where they, we could just burn and die. Like that's going to make us burn and die because that doesn't deal enough damage to us. Yeah. It's a great draw. A lot about playing Death Shadow, I think, that I've learned is you need to identify when you are playing against hands where you have to thread the needle. You know, it's where you need to make it so that things work out in your favor here. So what is this? Another Swiss Spear. Okay. Now, I think this is a hand that has the potential to thread the needle. Okay. So now let's think. Do I have to stub this? Fetch shock. Stub. I go to 16, go to 12. Play shadow. Play fetch land. I think it's okay to, I think it's all right to stub this. Though I kind of want to stub something that removes my Death Shadow. If I just let this go, I go to 16, Fetch Shock to 13, Bolt this, go to 11, play Death Shadow, play F Polluted Delta. Yeah, I think I'm actually just going to let this go and I'm going to push a creature. I'm going to bolt a creature. Tap crit, shock on two. I think we're I think we're killing one of these, right? Because we also need to, in order to win this matchup, you have to clear the way and be able to attack with your creatures. Right, or did I, did I miss that? Oh, I should have got a steam vents. God damn it. Yeah, I should have got a steam vents. 
I should have got a steam vents. Give me the option to bolt this. That was a mistake. Okay, so we let this go. I probably don't block. Yeah, I think I just take this. I go to six. They have two two spells in their hand. If they do. I'm gonna stub the next spell. Yeah, I should have played my steam vents. Cause like that's what I needed. I needed the steam vents. So this fetch actually might be relevant. Cause I can go, like if they have two two drop spells, I do want to get one of them. There's no difference between six and five. I guess it's a creature off the top. Boros charm, Boros charm. All right, so my opponent is going to have my opponent bricks, they're gonna lose. They actually need to hit a one drop. Holy shit, we're gonna win this game. Yep. I'm gonna do this in their upkeep because I don't want them to go two spells to get this out of bolt range. Wow, my opponent literally doesn't have a draw that kills me, I don't think. And now I just bolt this. Is there any reason to not bolt this? Is there any reason to not bolt this in order to bolt a blocker, maybe? But if they have a blocker, then they only deal one damage to me. Then I died of Boros Charm. Yeah, I could have bolted in response to the fetch line also. Here's the big question. Do I lightning bolt this or do I just wait? If I just wait, I die to the fourth Boros charm. But I win through a blocker. And then if they try to kill me, then I'm just going to kill this. I think we're going to just untap here. I don't die to the Boros charm, but I beat a blocker. Got him. Yes. There we go. All right. Holy shnikes. We got the 4 1. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, Teddy, I would have, so let me move back here to the deck here. That's gonna be my last league of the night. It was just a long stream. Um, what I'm saying, Teddy, is that I would, they, in order to die to a three to a three mana burn spell, they would have had to do it before the Swift Spear connected and I could have just bolted the Swift Spear, you know? So by me waiting, I beat Goblin Guide and Eidolon off the top but I lose to the last two Boros Charms, or I, be, I beat a blocker, which there are more blockers than there are Boros Charms. So I actually think it's right for me not to do that. I'm actually gonna cut the YouTube video off here and just